Yo, what is going on YouTube? I hope you guys are doing fantastic today. Today we're bringing another coaching video. We've got a support VOD review that we're going over. Uh, he's playing Kepri. It's a very good watch. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Well, looking yeah. at the 2v2, you're Kepri, uh, Charybdis. You have decent fight potential, pretty good clear. Uh, Geb and Hachiman, they have worse clear, worse fight potential. So you should win this 2v2 in terms of clear. You should win it in terms of the fight. Uh, and then all you got to keep in mind is they went Penta Beads and you guys went Shell. So you guys have even the Relic advantage in the laning phase. So getting to lane, perfectly fine. doesn't matter. You're level 2. You should just be playing up here. You should, up. you should be putting autos onto this wave. Because of how your 2v2 works, Charybdis has the advantage in the clear because she has those piercing autos. It's the same thing when you're fighting with like a Rama or an Izanami. You usually just have the push as long as you get there around the same time. Like this, perfect, everything perfect, perfect. Keep walking up. Keep walking up. Yeah. You can even block autos on this Hachiman to make your clear better and just trade a little bit of your health bar to get this advantage. But because of how you play this, you guys actually, I think, end up losing pressure off of this. Yeah. Because yeah, he's cause... able to put autos onto it. You're not. And this Hachiman is able to just get off free autos. Maybe you still... Yeah, yeah. So you're just going to get out clear now. You hit level two with this start as a support off of four minions. Three melees and one archer. Just as yeah. a, a piece of information that you should know. If you knew it if you knew it before, good. If you didn't know it before, you know now. This is this right. is where you guys are giving up pressure here. Again, where walking here guarantees you nothing. You can't do this in front of them. You're also just putting yourself kind of on the back foot like you already did this camp. But now who's going to get to this, this wave first? It's going to be about even. So instead of you guys being able to hit the way first because of how we path into the jungle, you guys are now going to probably lose this 2v2 pressure again. Maybe you you played a little bit more aggressive, but... So you should just be playing up here again. I think you're just worried about their damage. Yeah, I think it's... this was my first game with that carry, and I just I just played too passive, mm -hmm. not knowing what he would do. As the support, you usually dictate the laning phase. How you play is how your ADC will play. Because if you think about it, like when you're playing in first person... You can't see what your ADC is doing at this point, right? Because he's going to be behind you, usually autoing the wave. You don't know if he's backing up. You don't know if he's playing forward and looking to go in. However, if you look at your ADC, your ADC can see, okay, you're backing up. I need to back up. Oh, you're going to be started playing forward, maybe? Oh, I should be playing forward. But if you are the, 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 the ranged character, it's easier to play off your support. That's why usually the support like dictates the landing phase and how they want to do it. If they want to play more passive or more aggressive. And then here, this is fine. Perfectly fine, even if you don't get it. And this is smart of you to back up again. Because you still have no eyes on this cab. When you're you're looking for plays on right side, I don't know what you do here. I'm just going to say it before. If you're looking for plays on right side as your dodgy and your Shiva are, either if it's an invade just for the camps or for a gank, and then you know your Morgan is also in the right side, the, the, there should be... The, how you play those first two waves is how you should play this wave. You should be playing so yeah. far back that there is no way that you can even get auto by this Hachiman. And if they had a blink that you could get blinked on. This is still pretty fine. You actually should be out, right? Yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah you yeah. guys played that yeah, well. Sure. Yeah, yeah, that was that was good. And they had to end up three ways splitting that wave too. Which is like a, a win for you guys. Also, as a, a thing that I've seen just a couple times, I just want to put this back out there just because uh, arrow's not built as much. But just make sure ADC's getting the last hit on that arrow. Say an ADC gets about 100 last hits on arrows throughout the entire game, that's 700 gold they're getting. I mean, you can kind of just tell that you guys aren't too comfortable with each other. Which is, yeah. it's not that big of a deal. But um, it, it just seems like you both are kind of like waiting for the other one to kind of make up his mind. And then nothing yeah, is really you're... being done. I was telling him to go do our purple after wave, and then I would just sit here and harass him. No, no, this yeah, that's perfectly fine, Cole. But we heard the purple drop, so we just both mm. go and split our purple. Yeah, yeah. The game also rotated to red, which he didn't know. So you go towards mid a little bit earlier this game, or to backs. Sorry, not yeah, go to, I, yeah, go to backs here. Th this is fine, though. I, I don't mind this call at all. Because if you I don't know if I go to mid early this game or not. Uh, I may have, I may not have. I, it, it'll depend on where our jungle is at that time. Gotcha. I think our, I think our jungle was calling that they were going to play back on, on solo side again. So I don't, I don't remember if I go to mid tier or not. Okay. I mean, either way, I like this call. As long as this guy's not getting zoned, you are going to be winning out because nobody's going to be able to get your back camps. So you go back to 
duo, it looks like. Overall, you might be in a better spot in duo. Geb is slightly in front of you, which is fine. But your Charybdis and uh, their Hachiman are, like, even, which is good. Yeah, it might have been that Morgan called she had to back. I don't think there's really anything you could do here. As long as your ADC is calling the Geb over here. So your Morgan is off on the timing, which is unfortunate. It's something you got to deal with sometimes. Left spawn. You are a bit late too. Morgan is late. So, I mean, at this yeah. point, you kind of just have to just try and steal. You don't have like the level five more uh, dodgy spike. You have your Morgan spike, but it's still going to be a 1v or 2v3, but they have two ultimates and you only have one. So that's fine. You tried to steal. You didn't get it. That's fine. I think this is the part where it makes it awkward because of how you guys played that. You guys didn't get lefts and now you're having to three ways split this mid wave. So good back timing. Uh, you can get full Thebes and I might have thought about selling these for just a century because early centuries are pretty OP. If they do place like a ward bottom left, you just have a free D ward. I like just having a sentry in hand just in case somebody wards in front of you or if you need to know you have to have vision somewhere. Since you went Thebes, the next thing you want to do is you want to get this Thebes stacked as quick as possible. You immediately get to mid wave, probably calling for the Morgan to hold wave, which is good because now like for support, your rush is getting this Thebes online because he also didn't go Thebes. So this, this Geb is super effective right now. He's 55 props and he's got HP 5. He's got a good amount of health. You're sitting at 6 props of each and 250 health. That's whatever. I like the uh, I like the rotation. You also got the mid wave. Perfectly fine. You're playing up a little bit. You really knew they couldn't go on to you. Because you were keeping your spacing from the Geb. Also, this is a pretty good bait for you to be having because you have this uh, this rotation prior, uh, prior right now. Unless you're going for this purple buff invade, you don't really need to sit on the tower line. I think it's a um, something that support players do where they just feel like they have to be like looking for fights kind of at all times. Actually, good use of your two. Oh, really there good play. Go. That was a really good play. Really, really good play. I hit him. I hit him like that a couple times, just counting to two and then throwing my three. That was that was very very good. Didn't use your shell. Instead, you used your two defensively. You didn't ult him because you underestimate or understood the, his damage. I actually like giving up this wave because you're sitting at a good amount of stacks. This is up. Yeah, this is fine. Yeah, yeah. If you're going for a scorp, it's fine. If this scorp wasn't called though, you just kind of walk mid for no reason when this purple buff is something you could split. But. If they were calling score beforehand and you, and you knew it, that's a, that was a good rotation. Yeah, and the Daji was saying uh, that he wanted to play solo side and look for blue again. Okay. Yeah, I think we invade his blue like three or four times in a row. So yeah, just be smart right here because you know the Daji is in base. I didn't know they had finished those. So I was just yeah, yeah, no, I that part's fine. Them at all. No, yeah, that part's fine. I just want you to be aware of where you're... you're I think a, a big thing supports do also is they don't really think about how strong the team is. They're kind of just looking to hit abilities. You knew the dodgy was coming out of base, and then you had no eyes on the other three. You just know they're somewhere around mid. This is still very risky to do. You see how this cab is still right here? As yeah, we don't know these, what vision they have. Yep. Like, we don't have any any sentry or anything, so we don't know their vision. You could have just walked underneath here, and you probably... Maybe you lived it, but, I mean, either way, it's just it's just like a bad uh, bad habit to have. If, if you're not weak, or if you're not strong, I would just be pretty careful pulling these uh, oracles. Sure. It ends up being five cause, fine because they pass over top. I assume they don't know where the dodgy is either, and that's why they're playing a little bit safer. That play is kind of irrelevant. It's just has to, it's hand in hand with the other one where you're just a little weaker. So just be be a little smarter with your positioning. I, I wish I could see whose ward that was. This little trifecta, like boom, boom, and then maybe getting this one a little bit deeper, like here to see this pathing like this. Yeah. Because the importance is seeing the pathing from this back camp because the jungler can't just walk up here and then go for a gank. Yeah. If you if you can get this ward just a teeny bit deeper, like somewhere right here, just so it covers this entire line. Yeah, that makes sense. You, you makes would, sense. Your, your ADC is unkillable unless for some reason the jungler passed through here, which is highly, highly unlikely. But it's still very good division. So here it is. Boom. Good tanking. Good play. Ah, nice. she's just bad. And now, like, I don't know how we lose this game in the mid when we don't we don't have clear comps. Oh, I think okay. the call is gold. 
Yeah, we lose. Yeah, if you're we lose doing this gold. something, this is well, you lose this gold. No, no, we win the gold, but we lose oh. the game. So now you should immediately back. Immediately back. Immediately back. Yeah, now you're almost yeah, there. Yeah. I mean, that's that's fine. If the entire team is like, okay, you don't need to back yet. Let's just do this pyro, and then you can back. That's fine. Yeah. Just do keep in mind that right now you have a Morgan who's only got one item. A Kepri who only has one item. So even though you are up 3,000 gold, you guys are not as strong as you think you are because you have 4,500 gold in hand between your jungle yeah. and, or your, uh, sorry, your mid and support. Our advantage is currently on the map. Exactly, not. exactly. It's not in your, it's not in your uh, pockets or uh, in your items. I mean, a, a good pick. Now you probably go back to what it looks like. All right, so you, that's fine. That's fine. But na now immediately get your back off. If you're not doing this, immediately get your back off. Are you going to go mid and soak this mid wave? Yep. Still, still overstaying. I, I, if the call was to go to this pyro, I don't mind you not backing there. But like you just pathed and wasted like 10 seconds to not yeah. do anything there. Next item, Sov. Love it. Really good game for the Sov. Uh, Might have been a I mean... Might have been a little bit better for a heart word just because you're going to be getting dove by Kabraken and Cthulhu. Yeah. Obviously, it's it's more min-maxing stuff than, like, really important, but I think the heart word would have done, would have done a lot more work than the uh, solve. 